Ladies and gentlemen, you've been lied to. The scariest thing in software engineering is not inverting a binary tree, it is AngularJS. And in today's video, we are going to be rectifying this blasphemy. Just so you know that you're in good hands, I do currently hold the world record for the fastest binary tree inversion on YouTube, coming in at a total of 1 minute and 16 seconds, and half the time, as you saw, I was kind of just dirtling. When you first look at a binary tree, it kind of already looks inverted. Given that we call the top thing a root, and then there's all these things at the bottom, which we call leaves. But legend has it the creator of binary trees actually resembled the binary tree after his favorite animal, the octopus. But since each suction cup can only sprout at most two tentacles, in the industry we like to refer to these as binopuses. A adult binopus can grow quite large with thousands of tentacles, but has to be carefully balanced when growing up or it can easily turn into a linked puss, which is more complex to invert. Believe it or not, when they tell you to invert a binary tree, they don't want you to just like flip it so it's an upright tree. What they really want you to do is the cha-cha slide and take the left side or the left branch and swap it with the right branch for every single node in the tree. Before inverting any trees, I always like to come to careers.google.com and just come over here and search for some software engineering roles. And uh, I also like to even apply to them as well. Now, they never actually call me back for a phone interview, but this just gives me like an ember of hope deep down in my soul that what I'm doing here is not meaningless. The time that I put into inverting binary trees and learning these things will eventually lead to my success as a staff engineer at Google. Or at least that's what I want to put in my memoir under the never give up on your dreams chapter. I like to practice in real game time conditions. So I got Chrome up because I'm a Google simp. And then we also have a fresh Google Doc where we're going to be working in. Now it's a rookie mistake just to start working right away because it's common knowledge that you code 37% slower in light mode. And you also want to impress your interviewer and earn their respect. And developers do not respect light mode. So step zero is to announce that you have installed and plan to use the Google Docs dark mode. Now you're announcing it because you're on a phone call with them because we're practicing like real game time conditions here. Let me turn this on. Bam, bam. Next, they're going to ask you what programming language you want to use. And if you want to break the ice, you can start off with a little bit of a jest and tell them you want to use HTML. But you got to be careful about this because sometimes they start gagging hard like you just said you're going to use PHP or something. But either way, the programming language I like to start with is CSS. And I always like to begin by writing some pseudocode in a comment. So let's go ahead and just say, start by inverting a binary tree. And that is really the plan for my code here. I want to make sure that I'm always comfortable while coding, so I actually won't stay on Arial font. I really like this Comforta font, it really makes me feel comfortable. And uh, we're going to switch to 18 font, that way we can actually see what we're doing. And we're going to start off with a class here, a nice tree class. I always want to make sure that I'm inverting the whole forest. And we're going to just do a curly brace there, a closing curly brace. And of course, one, two, three, four spaces. But personally, I actually like five, so we'll just sneak that one in. And we're going to say transform here. And uh, some people will go back and actually make this lowercase, but I much prefer the capital case T, which is great when you're in Google Docs. And uh, this is where junior devs mess up. They just go in for a rotate Y 180 degree. All right. This will not get you a job at Google. This will not invert a binary tree for you. How many people? do you think are applying to Google? I'll tell you right now, thousands. They all want to invert binary trees. They all want a job there. This is not going to let you stand out. It's not going to cut it. But senior devs know there's one thing that you can add to stand out. Important. That's all you got to add, and you're going to be the top candidate. Your style is going to overwrite everyone else's, and you're pretty much guaranteed to be hired after this. You'll want to double check this with your interviewer, but you also probably want to slap a star in there. That way you get all the subtrees as well. Next, the interviewer is gonna ask you to test your code. And this is really where the strength of CSS shines because you can test it right now in front of them in the browser. All you gotta do is ask them to open up DevTools. Now they might flounder around a little bit, right clicking everywhere, wondering how they actually open up DevTools. And this is another place where you can really show off your expertise and just let them know if they hit Alt F4, that that will go ahead and open up DevTools. So you show them a cool little trick there and tell them to just head over to Elements and make this HTML. Come on, buddy. I'm clicking you like 10 times. Okay, tell them to just right click and edit HTML because it's not listening to you and make him a class. 
All right, there you go. And it's gonna lag a little bit because this is a giant tree. All right, let's click out. HTML is now a tree. We're gonna hit the plus over here. And of course, we're gonna add our star and we're just gonna copy our transform, our algorithm. And we'll just let them paste it and watch as their entire document inverts. Now, no matter how impressed the interviewer is, they usually do notice that not everything actually gets inverted and they will ask you to do it again with a new language. It's okay, refresh the page, take a deep breath, and we got some more tricks up our sleeve. At this point, pick your poison, choose whatever programming language you like. Personally, I like to opt for Python here because it's not poisonous, but Haskell's a good option as well. Sometimes they'll be nice enough to write a little boilerplate function out for you like this. If they do, it's best not to actually change the name of the function they give you. Most of them are C++ chads and they've never touched an underscore in their life and they're quite sensitive about these things. So just pretend they're not a heathen and just enjoy the nice function that they gave you. Rule number zero of binary tree questions is they're easily solved with recursion. If you're still scared of recursion, I recommend you get stuck in an infinite loop of practicing recursion problems until the sight of a function calling itself doesn't make you wet your pants. Rule number zero of recursion, don't forget the base case. By base case, I mean when we get to the end or when we're given a node where we don't have to do recursion to actually invert it. So for example, when we have this node one here to invert it, uh, we don't have to do anything because it doesn't have a left or right child. So if we wanted to, we could write our base case right here and we could say if node.left, if that did not exist and node.right did not exist, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we can just return. We're doing this in place. That's why we're returning nothing here. Instead, we're gonna be mutating the nodes left and right fields. And by mutate, I don't mean we're gonna turn it into a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I just mean we're gonna change what the values of right and left are equal to. The next part is very important. It's when a regular node is passed in, like for example, 10 up here, and we have to swap the left and the right side. And you're gonna be very tempted to do it like this. One, two, three, four. Node.left is equal to node.right. Space, 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 space. Node.right is equal to node.left. Do not do this. This is how you disgrace yourself. This is how you disgrace your family. This is how you get shadow banned from Fang. Google will tell all the other companies how you're disgrace, and you'll be added to the blacklist and you'll have to work at some crappy non-Fang company like Microsoft where they don't even pay their freaking intern who works on VS Code as a developer advocate making amazing extensions and probably brings more users to VS Code than all other marketing efforts put together. But anyway, what you just did there was chop off your left arm and then for whatever reason, after you put your right arm over your left arm, you decided to take that right arm and stick it on your right side again. And this line right here is the devil. One, two, three, four. You are the devil. This line right here just destroys your left arm and it's gone forever. This is the bad line. Uh oh, I'm getting compile errors. Let's just make this into a comment. Uh, where are you? All right, we're good. You can fix this very easily. All we're gonna do is save our left arm. So we're gonna go down here, one, two, three, four. Temp, wait, you're not a comment. Wait, wait, wait. Bye. There we go. It's equal to node.left. And now when you chop off your left arm, it's still there. It's just right here. And then you're just gonna set it right there. And uh, here we go. Happy. Congratulations, you just successfully amputated your arms. You're now ready to star as a doctor in Grey's Anatomy Season 5. But we're not working with arms here, we're working with trees. And they got several branches, so we're not done quite yet. Because now we have to invert this guy, and invert this guy, and rinse and repeat. And that's where we add the recursion magic at the end here. And we say invert tree node.left, one, two, three, four. Invert tree node.right. And now everything is inverted. By the way, I don't actually like to use this as my base case because it actually crashes like my sister when she goes driving when you pass none for the node. So you have to actually pass some if statements to make sure left and right aren't null if you want to do that. But a much sexier solution is just if not node. The entire time I'm trying to invert a binary tree, these stupid birds are just squawking out here. They're like begging to be inverted or something.